In this video, we're going to take a look at a console API method called console.trace, which is going to drastically improve your JavaScript debugging workflow. So what exactly is console.trace, or what does it do? In simple terms, it's just a method that you can place inside a function, and it will then tell you all of the function calls that happened in your application to get you to the point that that console.trace is placed. So if you have a function up here that you place console.trace inside, it will see what called this function and it will figure that out and then you'll drop down. What called that function? Figure that out, drop down, and it will keep going all the way down the call stack until it reaches the start of your application, which is most likely going to be the global namespace. And because you now have that information, you can see the flow of information through your application, and that's gonna allow you to figure out where your bugs might be and just speed up the whole process of fixing them. So without talking about it anymore, let's hop over to the screen and take a look at it in action. Okay, so let's dive in to find out just how useful console trace can be. So we're starting off with just a simple HTML document that doesn't need any explanation. Well, then we'll jump into our script. So this is what we've got. I've got a main function, which I've called app, which we're just invoking at the bottom of the script just so our code actually does something. Then inside this function, we have two other functions, our do something, which again, we're calling at the end, so the code actually does something. And then the do something function just declares two variables, passes those in as arguments into the sum function, which just adds them together and returns the result. And then we're alerting that value out. So in our case, our A and B is one and two, just adding those together, we alert out three. And we can go into the browser, refresh the page, and we get that three alerted out, just like we expect. But now, let's say that we have a huge code base. We've got multiple files, lots of functions, lots going on. And we've got a bug, which is obviously extremely common. And we've narrowed it down to our bug being in the code somewhere around the area where the sum function is being called. But the sum function is being called in many different places, but the bug doesn't appear in all of them. It's only on one of them. So we need to figure out which sum function call is the problem and then go in and fix it. So the way that I've seen many JavaScript developers tackle this sort of problem is just barge in and just scatter around lots of console logs and each one will have a different message and they're all in different places in the code where a bug could potentially be then they run their code and uh, then whenever the bug appears they look at the console see what the last message that was logged out is and that's probably where the bug is so they go back into their code find where that message is logged and there you go they found where the bug might be and this certainly works, and I'm not knocking that approach, but it does require a lot of typing, lots of copy and pasting to get the console logs in there to start with. And then once they're in there and you found your, your bug, you've got to go and remove them all again. And uh, that's not to mention if you don't happen to remove them all, you might end up with production code that's logging messages out randomly to the console. And uh, the whole thing's just obviously quite messy. But console trace solves all of that problem. So we can come in here. I've got a semicolon in there for some reason. And we can put in a console.trace. And then we give it a name. We'll just say our first trace. And that's just so if we have multiple calls to console trace, uh, we name each one with their own unique name, and then when they're logged out to the console, we can differentiate between them. So that's all that's for. Now, what console trace is going to do is the code's going to run, and eventually the app is called, which then calls do something, and then that calls some function. So eventually we're going to get down to line 10, and the console trace is going to be called. And at that point, it's going to trace 
back down the call stack. And uh, in this case, our sum function was called, and then the next function down the call stack is do something, because that's where sum function was called from, and then the next place down from that is going to be wherever the do something function was called, which is here, right in our app function, and then the next step down is going to be where app was called, which is here in our global namespace. And that's the entire call stack, from some function to do something to app to the global namespace. So now if we go into our browser and open up the console, and uh, we can zoom in slightly so you'll see it better, and then we refresh the page, we get the same alerts out that we did before, but now we get our first trace. We can open that up, and we've got our stack trace. So the sum function, that is where, so that's the top of our call stack. So that is the last function call that was made before console trace was triggered. And of course, we know that to be true because we wrote console trace in our sum function. And then the next down is our do something function, which called our sum function. We know that's right. And then next down is app. And then the bottom is an anonymous function, which is the global namespace. And that's our full stack trace. That's the whole call stack. We started in the global namespace that called the app function, which called do something, which then called some function, then console trace was triggered. And another useful thing there is uh, we're told what file each of these calls was in and what line that call was made on. And uh, something that you can do is uh, if you want to see, so obviously in our example, our code is very short and it's obvious where things are coming from, but uh, you might want to find out what this code is that's calling some function. So we can say that inside the do, do something function, we can click that and zoom out a bit so you can see. And we're shown that the sum function is called here on line six inside do something. And then we can take a look at that code right inside Chrome DevTools and see what's going on, maybe fix our bug. So yeah, there you go, that's console trace. But as an added bonus, let's take a look at uh, a ninja way of using console trace. So obviously here we've had to type in console trace into our code. And that's obviously a lot cleaner than having console logs everywhere because now to clean up our code, we just do that. We've removed that one line and we're back to production code. But there's a way of doing it where we never actually have to write that console trace into the production code, and there's no risk of us ever having um, that in our production code. So we're on a local system, so that allows us to edit code directly inside Chrome DevTools. So let's refresh the page so we get the code without our console trace. And we go into our console, we see we've got nothing. We go back to sources. And now we can start typing code into here. So console trace, and we'll say we're ninja tracing. And we put our semicolon in. And now we just have to, obviously this app has run already and we've got our alert box out. So we come into the console and we can trigger this app function ourselves. So we call that, we get our alert out again, ninja tracing. And there we go, we've got uh, our full stack trace. And this time it includes a few more things because we triggered it from the console instead of from directly from the global namespace. So it's uh, the stack trace looks slightly different, but the top of it, the sum function do something and then app is exactly the same. No problem there. So uh, now we can find our problem. We know that it's in do something. We can click there and bang, we're taken straight back to it. And once we found our problem, this line of code has obviously solved the problem for us. But at the end of the day, our production code is untouched. So even if we forget to remove that, it's still not in our production code. Not that that's a huge issue, but it's just a little thing that helps us keep everything a bit cleaner. Hopefully you enjoyed that video and you've learned a bit about console trace and you can now use that in your own debugging workflows. 
course, as usual, I have a full write-up of this video at my website, so click on the bottom left of the screen to head over to that article now. Of course, uh, there'll be more debugging tips in this series, so click on any of the other links on the screen and you can head over to those now. And if you haven't, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel for more content regularly about JavaScript and frameworks and other languages. So until next time, stay hungry and keep coding.